know, I know, God will make my path straight. I know, I know, I'm gonna shout and praise. talking about trust while also taking a look at the story of a guy who had a far-reaching dream oh and we're also going to be flying high hey there I'm Amaya and I'm Zeke and today we're talking about trust which is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on and I'm depending on you to tell me what we're doing today have you ever been to the circus? Oh, I, I went once. And what was the coolest part? Oh, there were oh, these guys getting shot out of cannons and other dudes doing crazy tricks on motorcycles and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! But what about the acrobat? Oh yes, they were awesome sauce. Did you just say awesome sauce? Hey, it's, it's in the dictionary. Awesome sauce, extremely good. Excellent! Okay, your point. Acrobats are legit awesome sauce. And they have to be super strong and athletic and flexible and, and graceful all at the same time. Oh, that must take a lot of work. Exactly! And the most amazing thing is we get to talk to an acrobat today. No way! Yes, way. Her name is Grayson and I'm calling her right now. Hi everyone. Hey Hi. Grayson. We are so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. So you're an acrobat? Yes. So I do all kinds of aerial work on trapeze, silks, lira. The, the what now? Oh, well, I think I can show you guys some pictures. Trapeze, silks, and lira. Wow. How do you even start doing stuff like that? Well, my friend had a birthday party at the circus gym, and I fell in love with it. How would you even know how to do it? I had coaches to help me, so they got me started with a lot of the basics. Stuff like balance and strength training. Like, 
pull-ups and stuff? Yes, lots and lots of pull-ups. You have to build up a lot of strength if you want to trust your body when you're in the air. Trusting the trapeze. For sure. So all of the apparatuses have to be tested a lot before we can trust that they're safe. Plus, we have big mats in case we do fall. Wait, so you have to trust your training and the apparatus? What about the people you work with? Well, there's my duo partner, Parker. I have to trust him a lot when he's throwing me in the air. Wait, 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 wait. Parker, he throws you, like, through the air? Yes. So I was terrified the first time we did it. But we started by practicing in spotting lines. They're like safety ropes to keep me up in case I do fall. Wow! So you have to trust your coach and your partner, plus the spotting lines, plus your training, and the apparatus? All at once. So we have to communicate about everything. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Grayson. Before you go, can you show us some of your work? Yes, I'd love to. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Grayson. So cool. Thank you guys for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Think you and I could do that? I don't think I have that much trust. <laughs> well, speaking of trust, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God's amazing world was broken by sin. But God chose Abraham and his wife Sarah and promised to bless the whole world through their family. And after waiting for a long time, Abraham and Sarah had a baby named Isaac. When Isaac grew up, he had twin boys, Jacob and Esau, who didn't exactly get along. And that's where our story starts. Hey, we're ready. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. We want to hear what's up with Jacob and Esau. Oh boy. Okay. These guys had it in for each other from the start. They wrestled while they were babies inside their mom. I mean, when Esau came out first, Jacob was holding onto his heel. And they were like super different, right? Oh yeah. Esau was really hairy while Jacob was smooth skinned. And as they grew up, Esau loved to hunt while Jacob preferred to stay close to home. Now Esau was the older brother by just a few minutes. This meant he had special rights to money and property and even leading the family one day. But he was such a, a hothead, he didn't always stop to think. Now one day Esau was out hunting and didn't get anything. And by the time he got home, oh, he was super hungry. Jacob had just cooked up a, a pot of delicious red stew and Esau begged him for some. Uh-uh-uh, sell me your rights as the oldest. Fine, I'll die if I don't get something to eat. Esau threw away something really valuable for a bowl of soup. I bet he regretted that big time once his stomach was full. And things did not get any better between the brothers. Mm -mm. Their father Isaac was very old and he wanted to pass on a special blessing to his oldest son. So he sent Esau to go hunt and prepare him a tasty meal first. Now. This is where things get squirrely because Isaac's wife, Rebecca, overheard. And while parents are not supposed to have a favorite kid, Jacob was definitely Rebecca's fave. Rebecca came up with a crazy plan. Your father sent Esau to hunt wild game and prepare a meal so your father can bless him. Hunting will take Esau all day, so I want you to choose two goats from the flock. I'll cook them up and you can pretend to be Esau and take the blessing. Your father's eyesight is so bad, he won't know. But what if he touches me? My skin isn't hairy like Esau's. We'll cover your arms and hands with goat skin. Cool. Pretty wild, right? But Jacob did just what Rebecca told him. And sure enough, Isaac gave his blessing to Jacob. At last, Esau showed up. If you're Esau, who just brought me a meal? I gave him my blessing. It wasn't me. Then your brother tricked me. First he took my rights as the oldest. Now he's taken my blessing. Dad's gonna be gone soon. 
Then I'll be in charge and I'll get rid of Jacob. Jacob had won birthrights and a blessing all by being sneaky. But he had made an enemy of his older brother. Rebecca wanted to keep her favorite son safe. Esau is going to try to get rid of you, so I want you to run away to my brother Laban in Haran. But I don't know him. I, I've never been away from home. Just do it. Stay with him until Esau cools down. Uh, okay. Okay, imagine you're Jacob. You got what you wanted, but it's backfired. You've got to leave home and everything you know. It's a pretty scary place to be. Jacob set off through the wilderness with nothing but his own thoughts. What's going to happen to me? By nighttime, Jacob arrived at... The middle of nowhere. With no place to stay, Jacob curled up on the hard ground with nothing but a stone for a pillow. Ah! Neck crick. But as Jacob slept, the most incredible thing happened. He saw a vision from God. In the vision, a broad stairway reached from the earth all the way up into heaven. Shining angels climbed up and down in a parade that dazzled Jacob's eyes. And most amazing of all, the Lord stood beside the staircase. Now, if you are Jacob, you may not be sure what God thinks of you. I mean, God has promised to bless the whole world through your family, but you've done some pretty sneaky things along the way. God might decide to go back on that promise. Then, the Lord spoke to Jacob. I am the Lord. I am the God of Abraham and Isaac. I will give you and your children the land you are lying on. They will be like the dust of the earth that can't be counted. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. I am with you. I will watch over you everywhere you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. The light faded, the vision disappeared, and Jacob woke up. The Lord is surely in this place. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had used as a pillow and set it up as an altar for God. May God be with me and do as he has promised. Then you, Lord, will be my God. Then Jacob continued on his journey to Haran. And that's the end for now. Okay, so uh, Jacob was kind of messed up. Yeah, but even though Jacob made a lot of not so great choices, God was still with him. God still had a plan to bless the whole world, and Jacob was part of that, even though he was not perfect. Many hundreds of years later, Jesus was born into Jacob's family line. It's a story that we're still part of. So what is our part in that story? Well, you can trust that God has a plan, even when it's hard to see the path ahead. So maybe like, maybe you and your best friend had a fight. You can still trust that God loves both of you and that he is there with both of you as well. You just need some time to cool down. Or maybe you're struggling at home or school or really anywhere and you just don't know what to do. You can trust that God knows. God is in control. Yep. We don't always get to know the details of God's plans, but we do know God promises to make everything right in the end. Even if we mess up along the way. <laughs> I think you've got it. I'm off. So here's the thing. You can trust that God has a plan no matter what's going on. Got it. Now, do you think we can fit a trapeze in here? Um, I mean, Grayson is so good. Let's just watch her some more. Awesome sauce. See you next time. <laughs>